G'day. Today we're going to look at the question, what if? It's a powerful thing. And used properly, it can be a great tool for modelling future behaviours. What if can help us be more authentic in our actions? The theory of positive disintegration talks about creating a hierarchy of our values. But part of that process has to then be aligning our actions to those values. And that takes work and planning and a little bit of imagination. So today I'm going to talk about using a process flow to think about potential actions and how they align with your authentic values. We can't always control the circumstances we encounter in life, but we can control our actions. And it's important that those actions align with our values because that's what makes us authentic. There's not much point in going through disintegration and learning about the theory if you don't walk your talk. You can intellectualize Dabrowski all you want, but if you don't make changes in the way that you act, you're not bringing your values to life and you're not being authentic. If you're serious about personality growth, then you also need to be serious about behavioral change. Being authentic isn't always as easy as it first seems. Sometimes it has many layers. So for example, if you're in a disagreement with someone, you could just blurt out what you're thinking. Some people feel that keeping it real is the way to go, but that's not authentic. Not for me anyway. For me, being authentic involves speaking my truth, but doing so with compassion and empathy for the other person and speaking in a way that hopes to reach solution, not trying to win an argument for the sake of being right or just voicing my opinions. So for me, thinking about what if means aligning my actions to all my values, not just selected ones. And that's not as easy as it first seems without a little bit of forward planning. So today I'm going to use a process flow to show you how you can use it to plot out potential life scenarios and behaviors. And I've decided to pick the biggest, scariest, most unknown example of a what if that I can possibly think of. And that is the question of what happens when we die. But first we need to know, what is a process flow? Well, process flow or process map is a diagram which shows the relationships between circumstances, decisions, and actions. In a business context, it's basically a visual representation of how things get done. What a process flow does is guide actions. So we can use it in our personal lives just as effectively. Now there are four key components to any process flow. A starting point or trigger, which gets the ball rolling. Decision points, which are set out as closed questions wherever possible with yes or no answers. Arrows for each yes or no outcome to connect them to the next question or step. And finally, you need actions or responses where there's no more questions to be asked. And I'll give you a quick example of how this all fits together using the example of Schrodinger's cat litter box. The starting point is looking in the box. Questions then a yes or no question about whether or not Kitty has left the poop. Depending on the yes or no outcome, there's an appropriate action. Get how it works? Okay, here we go with the big one. On to the question of what happens when we die and what might happen to me in the afterlife. The first thing I did is went out and did my homework. I researched what was already there because there's no point in reinventing the wheel. In life, we can learn from the experiences of other people. So doing your homework is a really great place to start. Now, while I didn't find any afterlife process flows, I did find Pascal's wager. Now, Blaise Pascal was a French mathematician who came up with a probability wager or a bet that humanity takes when it comes to believing in God. And as you can see, he's created this four-way split based on whether or not God exists and whether or not you believe in God. I had a lot of problems with this. For starters, it's monotheistic. It only takes into account Christianity. There's also zero unknowns on it, and it assumes Pascal's understanding of the afterlife is correct. And it also has belief as the only key determinant. Now, as a person who believes in the possibility of many gods, I find this all highly problematic. But it wasn't until my favourite heathen YouTuber, Ocean Keltoy, did a video on why Pascal's wager fails that I knew I was on the right train of thought. And if you're interested in heathen things, or polytheistic logic, or even witty puns about Norse mythology, I would highly recommend his channel. 
With my flow, I wanted to fix those grievances I had with Pascal. So I replaced the monotheistic view with a polytheistic view, uh, embracing the concept of many gods, which I've chosen to represent as kittens. Because who doesn't love kittens? I also want to add in elements of uncertainty, based on the fact that humans can't really know what happens when we die until it happens to us. And I wanted to remove the reliance on belief or only one religion being right. So I've pretty much swapped out Pascal's whole theory for something a lot better, which looks at all the possibilities. So with these things in mind, I created what I call the Pedro Pascal's Kittens of Theological Uncertainty model. It wouldn't be academic if it didn't have a really long name. So to create my model, the first place is to find the starting point. That was pretty easy because in this case, it's death. Then the next step was to get all my questions together and sort them into an order. And I had a lot of questions. So I wrote them all down. And then the next thing I did was try to arrange them into a rough order. Because sometimes questions rely on answering other questions before it. So in this example, there's no point speculating on whether there are multiple gods until you've answered the question of whether or not any sort of deity exists at all. And the last and the most important step before assembling my process flow was to be thinking about all my actions. How will I behave in a way that takes into account all of my values? When you do a process flow, make sure all your actions are completely value aligned. If you're doing a process flow in business, you'd still have to make sure that your actions align with the company values and any policies and any regulations. So no matter what your process flowing, make sure every square is an ethical one. Always be thinking about whether or not you should. So I had all my components and I was ready to assemble. So let's take a look at the finished product. This is Pedro Pascal's Kittens of Theological Uncertainty. As you can see, the starting point is death. And then my first question is whether or not there is anything in the afterlife at all. If there isn't, well, that's that. But you know, so I've still thought about my reaction. And in this case, it's to have no regrets. Mainly because if the atheists are right, I'm not going to be around to regret anything. The second question is, if there is a God, can humans understand the nature of God? Here I bring in the element of uncertainty and ask the question, is God a feline as we suspect? And I've decided to approach this scenario with curiosity and acceptance. Because if God turns out not to be a kitten and is instead a giant rainbow space octopus or something, well, I can choose to approach this unknown octopus god with empathy and kindness, which is in alignment with all my values. From a process flow perspective, we need to recognize that we can't predict all scenarios and we still need to contingency with our unknowns. In business, if something out of the ordinary happens, it's normally a case of referring it to your manager and they can make a decision on something like that. In your personal life, maybe this is the point where you get some help. If something completely unexpected happens, take a breath, take a pause and seek help. Back to the flow. Now, if God is not a space octopus and is in fact a kitten, as we suspect, my next question is whether or not my kitten is there. If that's the case, I get to the best possible outcome as I see it and I can enjoy my afterlife. Now, a couple of things to remember. As long as my kitten is there, it doesn't matter how many other kittens are there. In fact, the more the merrier and everybody wins. If you've ever seen my video on the tiger tank, you will know that it is one of my values to embrace multiple perspectives, uh, not try to win or be right. So part of my celebration here is definitely being happy for other people. The second thing to remember is that not all religions or individuals conceptualize heaven the same way. And my concept of infinite reward might be vastly different to yours. So don't be afraid on your process flow to decide for yourself what good looks like for you. You see, talking about heaven is a little like talking about Pedro Pascal. Personally, I think he's the most beautiful human on the face of the earth. And he seems really nice, but I don't know him. And what I think about him is a product of my imagination. And yet here everybody is on the internet, either sending thirst tweets or otherwise rushing to his defense as though they know him and understand him. But it's speculation, assumption and fantasy. That's all it is. And nobody knows what the afterlife looks like either. Our ideas of heaven are just concepts. No one's been there and knows for sure. 
And in life, all of our what ifs are really just best guesses. So while we can try to plan for scenarios, what we must remember is that they might not be exactly how we imagined. And even if they do turn out the way we think, they might feel different. We might get to that point and experience emotions that we weren't expecting. This is why the flow is named after Pedro, because it's not just a take on Pascal's wager. It's a reminder that what we're working with is speculation. Even in the business world, we can use data and facts to model and predict outcomes all we like, but they're still predictions. They're educated guesses. Nobody knows the future for certain. So be kind to yourself if things don't work out exactly the way you thought. Back to the kitten flow. And now we hit a part where things maybe aren't best case. But I still try to remember that things aren't all black and white. And this presents opportunity because I can be open-minded and see options. So if my kitten isn't in the afterlife, it's not just a case of going straight to eternal damnation because there's still a lot of unknowns. If I'm greeted by some kitten who is not my kitten, the question for me is whether or not the kitten I meet is benevolent. They could decide to send me to somewhere that isn't damnation. And for that, I could choose to be grateful. Like when someone buys me a cold beer. It's not the full party keg, but it's still a cold beer and that's something to be happy about. The kitten I meet might show me mercy, which I didn't expect. In life, I can't operate on the assumption that if everything doesn't go my way, that it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket. That everyone's out to do me harm or it's all doom and gloom. And even if the kitten I meet does not show me mercy, there's still a chance that they'll send me to an acceptable version of hell. For which I can still be grateful and apply that cold beer principle. And if not, and they send me to an unacceptable hell, I still have the choice of whether or not I behave authentically. Now, what do I mean by an acceptable version of hell? Well, not all religions and cultures conceptualize hell the same way. So take, for example, Dante's Inferno, which is a many-layered place where only the worst people get punished the most. And in fact, Limbo, the top layer of hell, is nice-sounding. It's got a castle and sunshine and interesting people like Aristotle hanging out. So I can, if I choose, apply the cold beer principle and be grateful for that. But if hell is nothing but a fiery pit... I still get to choose how I behave when I meet Satan Kitty. And I choose to be authentic and remember my values. Because we don't know anything about Satan either. And again, our ideas of hell are just concepts and predictions. Maybe Lucifer Cat's only interested in punishing the really evil people. He might be an ethical kitty. So I might escape punishment. And if not, I have the choice of how I behave and react to any punishment. I will not be selling my soul or selling out my fellow humans and I can choose to give Lucifer Cat scriptures and show him compassion and kindness even if he shows me none because nobody but me gets to decide how I behave towards others. But the story doesn't end there. You'll notice one more diamond on my flow and that is the reincarnation diamond. And perhaps none of these states are for eternity in which case I'll get kicked back onto the ride of humanity for another spin and I'll enjoy it. The concept of reincarnation reminds me that not all things that happen to me in life are permanent. Think about your situation and how it might change over time or eventually end. So that was my flow. But what in the hell did I learn from it? I've learned that there's often more options than there first seems when you sit down and think them through carefully. And this happened to me not so long ago when I went to the skin specialist and had something cut out. And as I was sitting in the doctor's office waiting for the biopsy results, I realized it wasn't just black and white. It wasn't even going to be deathly skin cancer or nothing. There was a lot of gray area in between. And so I've learned from that, that there's not just brilliant or worst case scenario. Not everything was black and white. There was a lot of gray and I had options. I've also learned that I can embrace uncertainty And nobody knows the future, so I can give myself a break for that. I've also learnt that I can play with big scary ideas and fill them full of kittens and make them a little less frightening. And I've learnt that even in the worst case scenarios, I still get to choose how I respond and act. 
even if I meet Satan Kitty himself. Importantly, doing this shows me how much control I really do have in life. Because while none of the diamonds are in my control, I choose every square on that flow. But I suppose the biggest lesson I've gotten from this is that it takes work and conscious effort to walk your talk. Reflecting on what if is a crucial step for me in being prepared to be authentic, particularly in times of stress. And you can apply the process flow method to any uncertainty in life. What if I get sick? What if I lose my job? What if my relationship ends? What if I win the lottery? And what the hell do I say to Pedro Pascal if I ever meet him? You can think about any old what if, kittens or not. So, as Dabrowski would encourage you to do, use what if thinking to be more authentic. There's no point learning about the theory, learning about yourself, and figuring out all your new values if you're not going to put them into practice. Walk the talk, baby. Walk the talk. Because I don't know about you, but the person I want to be is one who acts with compassion and patience and acts thoughtfully. I want the person inside of me to be soft and vulnerable and playful like a kitten. I want to be grateful for my blessings, open to uncertainty, and above all, I want to be authentic and live my values. So, until we meet again, in this life or the next, keep walking that talk, baby. See you later.